Welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I bound this journal with these pretty little bows. Now, you might assume because it is in a three hole punched binder that all I did was punch holes in my journal signature and loop these ribbons through, but that's not what's going on here. Inside of the journal, you'll see that the signature is sewn, there are no big gaping holes. Um, but it's a technique I called belt loops. Uh, I've created six holes with my awl and I sewed the signatures through in a way so that um, where the ribbon goes through there's two lengths of ribbon that overlap. I don't know if you can see like right here, there, and up here. Uh, I apologize for the background sound effects. I film outside because my house is dim and the neighbor dog is in a kennel. So that's what that noise is. Um, anyways, let's get started. So, for this tutorial, I'm again using a um, portfolio folder. Initially, they didn't have these holes visible, but I saw that they would punch out eventually, so that's why I came up with this technique. I didn't want to have holes all of a sudden in my journal cover, so decided to work with them. And for this journal style, I've cut this in half, so I think the length is approximately nine, nine and a half inches. I cut it down to four and three quarters inches, so let's do that. Four and a half, four and three quarters. cover. Set these aside. This is my signature and my guiding diagram right here. I will do a close-up of this so you guys can see everything in a moment after I've made my holes. So what I did was I got because three hole punch objects or papers or folders, binders are standard sized, I just took a piece of notebook paper that had three holes in it and I marked where I'm going to make my belt loops. So one above and one below each hole. And uh, this, the numbers here show the order of how you sew them. It's not that complicated. First, let's get the holes punched. I'm just using the book binding and then all to make my holes. Now, you might see I'm punching a little bit higher but it's because I want to catch the smallest page. As long as you are above and below the hole, it's, it'll be fine. Because all you're doing with these holes is you want to have a place for the ribbons to catch, but not to be... Uh, to loosen legally. You want them to fit through and stay put more or less. I changed my background a little bit. I don't know if you guys noticed the table looked so red um, 
when I watched my video on YouTube on TV. Looked fine on the computer. Looked fine on the phone. TV was very bright red. And I didn't like it. And now I have this, and it's full of bubbles, which is also problematic. But hopefully it will smooth out eventually. Anyways, now that I have my holes, I'm going to take the diagram sheet out. But I want to leave my paper clips in place just to keep everything stable and keep the holes lined up. So, six holes. Now, this is my starting point, number one. I'm going to go in through there and then go out at number two. So, I'll get my needle. Sorry for all the background noise. Gardening happening. Today was maybe not the best day. All right, so. In through one. And leave a tail. And then out through two, which is the bottom. And then in through three, which is the second from the bottom. And out through four, which is the very bottom again. If it doesn't pull through, it might be that it formed its own little knot, which apparently it has. And there. in through five, which is the same as the first hole. Out through six. Which is the second one. Just make sure it's sort of tight or smooth every time. All right, six. And then seven is the very top. There's an airplane. I live near an airport. <laughs> All right. And then eight is the lower top hole. And there's 
it's another candle. Now, I don't think I ever said how much of this twine that I pulled out. I always rather have more than less. So I think I strung about two yards, which is probably also why it's tangling so much. Um, and then number nine is the top again. And then 10 is the lower bottom. Now I can tie a knot right here. Make sure everything's tight enough, but not too tight. <clears throat> now you can have your center of your journal be anything you want, obviously, but I'm doing the hidden signature knot technique. So I'm going to clip this. Now you can see here are the belt loops. One, two, Three. Center one's a little bit tight, that's okay. And what you're going to do is string these through. I have three foot long lengths of ribbon. Um, I'm going to do this off camera real quick to save time. Okay, so now I've got all of these through the belt loops. They don't shift around. They're all stuck. And now I'm going to loop them through these holes. And Sorry, I had to fast forward again, seeing that my time was running out. Anyways, so you've got each length of ribbon pulled through the corresponding section, and then all you do is tie your bows. First one tie knot, actually. Ha <laughs> ha. Almost forgot an important piece. There. You can not double knot it if you want to be able to take it apart, but um, I think I might want to adjust or add something. So for now, I'm doing loose knot. If your bows are too big, you can pull the hanging strings down and then readjust. See? Ta-da! Now you have bound with ribbon, beautiful little journal. And here's the close-up I promised of this diagram. Uh, easy enough to follow along, I hope. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.